Hey, it's Marin, and this is the weekly tarot and astrology forecast for October 6th through the 12th of 2019. So we'll get started with the tarot, then we'll move to the astrology transits and look at an oracle deck at the end to see what's happening energetically and in our collective consciousness this week. So we'll start out with a Celtic cross spread. I'm just using the normal Rider Waite tarot today. It felt like, felt like using the classic here. So shuffling the deck, and then we will pull a 10 card Celtic cross spread. Ooh, so this is, this is a really interesting um, Celtic cross because there's so many major arcana cards um, and that's really, really striking. So the first card we have is the Magician and the first card represents the situation at hand. So the Magician is represented by the planet, or it represents the planet Mercury as well. It's correlated with that energy of making the most of your resources to come to the conclusion and the manifestation that you want. So I think this week has to do with making the most of our situation to pile all the ingredients together, all the cooperative components to manifest what we want. The second card here is the cross or the complement to that, and we have temperance. And temperance is actually associated with the sign of Sagittarius, and it's a card which um, the metaphor that I've I heard I was taught and I like to use is like you're watering down wine, so you still get a buzz, but you aren't too fucked up. And I don't even drink, so I don't promote that. But I mean, it's kind of this energy of like, what do I need to give and to take to still have fun, but still hold my ground? And what's an equilibrium that's sustainable and enjoyable? So. Let's move forward and see what else we have here. The third card is the potential for the situation, and we have the strength card reversed. This has come up in several of this week's readings, um, in the recent readings for the weeks, and the strength card is associated with the sign of Leo. The strength card reversed has to do with not restraining our strength and simply like letting it all hang out and letting loose. So I think that the potential for the situation is like going overboard or trying to hold back and make everything so perfect perfect and micromanage that we like don't restrain anything. So the fourth card is the unconscious reason for the we reading and we have the Queen of Cups and she often signifies benevolent wisdom or like getting the emotional feeling that quells us. So I think we're looking to be told that like it's all going to work out or that a higher power is going to come in to solve the situation for us and like help us out here. The fifth card is the recent past, and we have the chariot, which is associated with the sign of cancer and of making our environment, especially our physical body, the optimal space to hold the space for the energy that we want. So I think recently we've been focusing maybe on like physically building strength or just simply building up the environment around us to support our manifestations. The sixth card we have is the King of Pentacles, and this is for the future outcome of this, or the future of the situation. This is basically like material success, like material security, sturdy financial security. Um, it's seeming like the matters at hand are kind of frazzled or delayed or don't have a alignment right now, but like they're gonna come together like strong. For the card, the seventh card we have representing ourselves, we have the Four of Cups reversed. So this is still a harmonious card of feeling um, at peace with our emotions. Reversed, it generally means that there's a new balance being found or that there's like a new dynamic paradigm or relationship that's bringing that emotional balance into play. The seventh card, or the eighth card, is our environment or our influences, and we have the Seven of Cups, and the Seven of Cups is looking forward to the future in anticipation. So I think that we're all, the people we're surrounded by are anticipating this growth. Like, we have a lot of momentum with the people around us that are believing in us and encouraging us to follow our dreams. The ninth card is our hopes and our fears, and it's the Ten of Pentacles reversed. So I think we're hoping for material security from this and like feeling grounded and we're afraid that it's all going to pull the rug out from underneath us and we're going to be kind of left in the dust with nothing to back us up. So the outcome, the 10th card, we have the moon, which is associated with the sign of Pisces. 
and figuring out what's real and what's not. The outcome is determining how we can actualize our dreams because right now there's a lot of moving parts that we don't necessarily know how to assimilate and we can see that there's this is going to come together and be really strong but we're figuring out what is the practicality of our dreams and what dreams are, what, what dreams do we even have for this? So with that being said, we'll put the cards away and look at the astrology for the week. So starting out on Sunday the 6th, the sun in Libra rests at the bending of the nodes. So the nodal axis is in Cancer Capricorn, so Aries Libra, the two opposite sides, are squaring the nodal axis, said to be at the bending of the nodes, which is a point that represents a skipped step. And with it in Libra, the sun in Libra here, it's kind of like indicating a step, skipped step of considering others or considering how our actions are affecting others around us and individuating out of that. So we need to integrate the effect that we have on others. There's a moon Venus square that further draws up some relational irritation here and this is building up to a Mercury Uranus opposition in the day so don't be surprised if there's some erratic interpersonal communication or some like just startling words that come about. On Monday the 7th the moon in Aquarius squares Uranus and then Mercury shortly after, so it definitely is going to jolt us awake to consider shocking the world through our words. Like, be careful the actions you make on the morning of the 7th, you might regret them. Good day to, like, get a workout in in the morning, though. The sun scores Saturn, which further accentuates ego differences around us, like wanting to set boundaries in certain ways. So stick to self-productivity, not trying to convert anyone else. On Tuesday the 8th, Venus enters Scorpio, the sign of ex exile, because Venus rules Taurus, the opposite sign, so it's in its exile or its most foreign ability to exemplify its significations through the lens of Venus, which leads us to find pleasure in the depths, kind of like finding what makes us comfortable in the uncomfortable. The Aquarius moon will sextile Jupiter, which definitely offers offers an opportunity for new abundance through opportunity that we have to keep our eyes open to or figuring out a new freedom that the doors are open in ways that we didn't consider before. Mars will oppose Chiron, so be wary of fighting like an egoic uphill battle to save face or feel validated. On Wednesday the 9th, the moon will trine Venus and sextile Uranus, so that's really nice. It's easing us into relational harmony of new ways with new people and new experiences um, that evening. That, and so all around that day, it just really encourages bonding with others in new ways. It's a good day to try something new with those around you and bond in mutual appreciation, like of gathering with friends or like going to a new restaurant or something, like a weird, weird food palette, like try something like that. On Thursday the 10th, the Pisces moon trines the North Node and sextile Saturn. So this sends us forward to make faded long-term decisions. Don't be surprised if on Thursday you're making a long-term decision, feeding into an opportunity that's like, whoa, that would really bring about some growth for me in the long term. Then it conjoins Neptune and the trajectory definitely goes less in terms of the practical and more in terms of the dream world. So that night, just be open with softer plans and be receptive to whatever, whatever like luxuriating you want to do that evening because the tone definitely switches. On Friday the 11th, the early morning moon is void, so I wouldn't make any set plans um, for its rest of its time in Pisces during that day. Remain flexible for Friday, like don't, don't set any plans, I would say, especially with the moon in Pisces void. Later that night, the moon enters Aries and conjoins Chiron, so use that Martian energy to look not to definitely be assertive in how you heal and not to look for egoic validation. Finally, on Saturday the sec or the 12th, the moon opposes Mars. Um, Mars is still in his fall in Libra, so avoid situations that you know are going to trigger you into a victim mentality. Like, don't play the victim. Don't be passive-aggressive on Saturday. Venus is also still in her fall in Scorpio, which she'll oppose Uranus, which jolts us into more erratic relational dynamics which jolts us into more erratic relational dynamics. And with the Aries moon at the bending of the nodes, at this squaring nodal axis point, um, it squares our fate. It asks us to face off with what 
disempowers us. Like Saturday the 12th is honestly a day for big triggers of inferiority complexes or feeling small and then being like, then I deserve healing because I'm playing small when that's not, not really the way to go because we attract what energy we put out. So by playing small, you're just gonna attract more fragmented, disempowered energy. So I can see how that ties into the tarot in terms of um, not seeing how everything is working out and trusting that it will by the end of the week. Things will be very clear about how our personal power is meant to integrate into this project. But starting out, it's kind of like we're all over the place. <laughs> My foot is wide asleep. I have the camera angle like a little different today so you can't see, but I'm in fuzzy socks and my foot is so asleep right now. So with the astrology out of the way, we will tie things up with the Oracle Work Your Light deck for a head, body, heart spread and see um, what the final guidance is for the week to come through for us. Ooh, I like, I like what I see. So for head, we have the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening to you, for you, not to you. So this might be a week definitely of ruffled feathers or of not feeling resonant with those around us. And we can see that as an opportunity to refine our communication, not to feel victimized. For the body, we have break the chain, ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future. I think we literally have to be careful of how we're physically spending our time and energy with others and choosing to break relational patterns that literally might have been handed down to us through generations. And being like, how many times has someone felt victimized by their significant other and then become passive aggressive? Like choosing to break the chain very clearly. Finally, for the heart, we have warrior woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? I think this is about this week seeing how fate is making it very clear to us through the mirrors where we need to step into our power and being like, okay, I'm badass. I'm not gonna pretend to not be badass so that I can feel badass by getting others validation. Like just stepping into the power and saying like, fuck it to everything else. And then seeing how that, like letting it all go, the strength card reverse, like just completely letting it all hang out actually brings the healing. So. I hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, like, subscribe, do all the things. I do offer astrology consultations and would love to read for you. All the info is down below, and I will see you next week.